Greetings shipmates and welcome to another episode of Let's Make Mistakes. Today we are going to be taking a look at the new HMS Implacable Tier 8 British CV. I have managed to acquire the CV by doing a combination of uh, directives, daily missions and I had to buy some containers in the end to get the last amount of clown, crowns and florins. But there we go, I digress, let's have a look and see how this battle plays out in front of us now. So um, we have got tier 8 matchmaking, so we are at our same tier. There's a couple of tier 6 boats in here, but they're not going to overly influence the way the game goes. I am in division with Urban Slayer, so there's a large amount of coordination between myself and Urban Slayer that was happening on comms when we played this game. So... There's probably different ways to look at this as well, so we'll get that out of the way nice and early. Is How does the CV cope on its own? We'll have to do another game to look at that. How does it cope in cooperation with other ships? It copes well, I think, with good coordination. So um, what I've done is my pretty stand. I've gone off with a rocket, so I'm going to have a little scout around. And if I can, I want to try and bait out the other CV from the Furious or the Shikaku, dropping one of their fighter consumables to uh, use them up nice and early so you don't have them later on. So I'm kind of patrolling around this Aoba and there we go. We've managed to get the first fighter squadron drop near us and now the second one as well. So we're just going to use a bit of boost and we're going to move away. Now this normally means that they're protecting something in this area. Now I am on patrol. I was looking for the two DDs as an Asashio and a Gator knocking around here. But I haven't found them, so I'm going to move my way across the map and see if we can spot them on the other side. Urban Slayer is moving his um, DD, the kid, up closer to the islands there, so block anything that potentially come through there and have a look out to the left. But he's staying close to the fleet for the time being because this is a standard battle. Talk. We don't need to go rushing up the other end and get ourselves killed early because dead ships don't contribute anymore. So I'm now making my way across the map having a look, see what's going on, uh, see if we can find these DDs, because there's still no sign of either of them. And, uh, but we do need to be mindful of these AA bubbles. But with the change to AA detection, I mean, it really affected the Minotaur and a few other smaller ships, but it gives you a little bit more time. Now you spot the planes as, as soon as they're AA, you're in AA range. And as we're about to find out from this Wichita that's about to pop up just in front of us, there he is. As I was turning, I want to be turning and getting away from him as quick as possible because there's a lot of AA going on there. And uh, take as limited damage as we can. Now, still no sign of this DD. We are going to push through these little island groups, see if he may have made his way through here. But the important number to note now is just down on the bottom there, I've got six rockets on deck. So I've got one full squadron ready to take off again, because we've been in flight for quite a while now, just searching around, just looking for a probing for an opening. So if anything does pop up, and it will do, on the other side of the map, I'm just going to send these planes back and take my next squadron off. And this is only because obviously they've not been committed, I haven't lost these aircraft, I've been looking after them. They are a little bit wounded, but um, they're still intact, so that's a whole squadron I can recover. So they can come into use later on in the game if we need to scramble planes, which inevitably is going to happen. So I see the Asashios just popped up on the other side of the map. In coordination with Urban Slayer informing me as such as well, I immediately return that air group and then I send up my next air group, which is again going to be the rockets because we are going after a DD. So we want to try and get hits on that one early. Now, unfortunately, this is a replay file and not the live game. And I only say unfortunate because that also means the reticle isn't going to be clear. So I will try and talk through what was going on as I was on the bomb runs but generally the more stable you keep the planes the better you keep the group in the more chance you've got to hit in your target and uh, these are things we did pretty well um, this hasn't really changed too much in the last patch from being able to get on the targets you just have to be a bit more mindful of your runs and playing a lot of CVs I've been more mindful of that so you just need to set up your approach a little bit better so I'm over the target of Sasho looking for him at the moment, and there's no sign of him. So I'm wondering if he's turned back, but lo and behold, he's just popped up down south. And uh, those deep water torps, while they're no threat to Urban Slayer, they have been spotted. And um, so hopefully the other ships behind him are starting to scramble. So I'm now on a run towards the Sasho, starting my bomb run, and it's going to be roughly where the dot in the middle of the screen is we're going to fire. But because he disappeared, we didn't get a chance to see him. 
Now, it's not critical. If it was in a cap, I would have been a little bit more disappointed because obviously I'll be looking to try and get the reset. But where his proximity is there, we're not too worried about that. Unfortunately, though, uh, even with that much notice, the monarch has managed to uh, die. And interestingly, the gate has just popped up and taken out our targo as well. So we're in a spot of bother here. We've got four ships this side against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven supporting. And the gate is closing in on the Charles Martel. So with them both in smoke at the moment, Urban Slayer is hanging around there. I was just having a quick look to see what the Gader was doing. And then the Asashio turned up. Now he's got some pretty powerful guns. They do hit hard and we want to keep Urban Slayer alive as well. So I'm immediately on the way back. I'm starting to run. I'll try and get a hit on her. We get a good shot out on the nose. And we get a good 1500 damage off her, which isn't too bad. Urban Slayer's a little close, but has managed to deal with the threat himself. And I did notice in the background that the CV was being fired at as well from the gate and the torpedo warning so the Asashio had spotted me and sent torpedoes and this game isn't going too well for us at the moment to be quite honest our Charles Martel is pretty low we've just lost the Cleveland the gate is pushing in towards our base now um, Urban Slayer has said he will take care of the Charles Martel at that point he's pretty low on health so I didn't see the need to turn the planes around I was heading straight back over to see what I can do about this Gator. And um, from memory serves, uh, unfortunately we have just lost our Charles Martel, but Urban Slayer has managed to kill off theirs. Uh, 200 points behind, they're in our base, uh, DD's down here, we're four ships down, we've got some work to do here. Now the rest of that fleet hasn't been spotted up top either for a little while, so we're going to deal with one threat at a time. So Urban Slayer's making his way back towards Cap. Now I've taken off with the dive bombers this time, probably not the best choice for the Gator. They do a lot of damage, but because they're, they're carpet bombs by nature, they're more difficult to hit. And this Gator's doing the right things here. He's keeping his AA off until I'm close, and then he turns it on. And uh, even my profile attack of the run here, the, well, unfortunately you can't see the reticle, the ellipsis shape, because I'm coming in from the side. It is shaped like the bow so your best attack vectors are from the front or from behind and preferably with them staying as straight as possible and not maneuvering makes life a little bit easier uh, he's turned off his AA guns again but there they go he's turned them back on so we're gonna dive off we're gonna try and get one hit on him that's all I'm really looking for is to try and get some damage on him now he's obliged his man just staying in a straight line and we get a good volley we get a fire and we reduce his life chances very low so immediately they go back to the CV, we're going to go straight up there with our attack rocket planes and fly straight back at him. Now I had dropped a consumable in there just to try and keep him spotted. He did the sensible thing and moved away from it. Now you see here, I start the dive early because I think he might be coming towards me, but he's not. He's trying to turn sideways, which normally means he's trying to think about getting his torpedoes out. But luckily we get there early enough and we do manage to secure the kill and remove the threat. Uh, now we have a new threat problem approaching us. Uh, we are three for far... For how many have we lost now? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they've taken 200 points lead out of us by stopping us in the base. And we've also got the Aoba, the Otago, the Ganez pushing towards the base and the unknown Bismarck we haven't seen for a while. Uh, the kid uh, of Urban Slayer is keeping them reasonably occupied for the time being, but we've decided between us now that we've just got to defend this position we just need to stay here and take these ships one by one and work them down because otherwise if he pushes up and goes around we're going to get overrun he'll get isolated and the same thing's going to happen to me so the cv is just moving down and we're going to start working down these ships together in in concert with urban slayer who will use his smoke occasionally and i'll keep them spotted and we'll see what we can do now my first drop here was to make the otago turn away from urban slayer which was successful i thought from the profile of the run he may have tried to turn nose in to avoid the torpedoes, which probably would have been a better choice. <clears throat> uh, luckily for me, he didn't, and um, he turned away from the cap, which is what turned away and towards the cap, which is what we were aiming for. So it allowed us to turn, start another run, and because of his profile, we're going straight for the Bismarck. Now again, I mean, Urban Slayer is thinking about his smoke, but with Bismarck Hydros pushing down towards him as well, we don't really want this battleship heading towards him. So again, I'm just going to drop some torpedoes off there. And we did have the bonus, of course. If you may see those torpedoes from Urban Slayer there towards the Otago, 
turned him back in, did turn him back into the torpedoes as well. So that was a double bonus. And at this point here, I should have just returned that torpedo bomber because it was never going to get in back. And we've managed to take care of the Otago. Uh, the Ganeza's bugged out, but the Bismarck and the Obra are still coming. And now we are down to six ships. And the Ducost has just taken out another one of those, so they're on to seven. But they do still have a rather reasonable lead, so we need to deal with these two ships next. So we're going to stay down here around the base for quite a while longer. And again, as we alluded to before, I'm trying to manoeuvre this Bismarck and keep him away from Urban Slayer. Because then Urban Slayer can get in a position just to shoot him down. So I'm going off with my bombers. I'm trying to start a fire on him. They're a good source of fire. We can look at that later on in the video. Unfortunately, we don't get one there. And I'm thinking about, on this run as I turn around from memory, I was thinking about going for the Aoba. But Cruiser, Fire, and the fact that he's tier 6 versus a tier 8, I thought the Bismarck would be a better one to get through. Now, we could have done a better job avoiding that flak there. We didn't. Uh, maybe I'd have slowed and pulled in a little bit more. But So I've gone straight over the top, looking to get this Bismarck, and luckily we do manage to get the fire off of it. With the health of the aircraft, they're not particularly healthy, so I'm just going to just try and move away from the AA bubble. And then I'm going to send them back. So they'll make their way back to the CV now and uh, be replenished so they'll be available to come up again. Now we know that fire went off and we know the Bismarck has now put that fire out. In such the fact that he turned in, Urban Slayer informed me about he's going to be firing off his torpedoes. So again I'm trying to just herd these ships around and trying to herd them into his torpedoes as well. And fortunately for us that's exactly what's going to happen. The Bismarck is going to take two there and start to flood, which we know he can't repair because he already damaged Con. And the Aoba is also burning as well because he'd repaired. So immediately I've dropped him. And then I'm going to turn out hard to the left. And I'm going to swing round to get some more torpedoes into the Bismarck. As we can see, one torpedo hits. And the guns of Urban Slayer land just in between to get that kill secured. And uh, he's gone. And now we're onto the Bismarck. And we're going to go straight in on him. We can see he's flooding from the steam pouring out from his um, engines there. And if you get really close, you can see the uh, water being pumped out of the bilges from the side of the ship as well. So he's had it. And that's the end of the Bismarck. So now we're actually starting to move this game towards a more winning position. We've got a large fleet at the top of the top of the map. They're still pushing away. We've got three ships up there occupying so I'm just going to pop up and see what I can do. I've already got the planes on, so I've started turning the CV. And he's going to start heading up the map now. Here we go. Can't see the waypoints being set right now, but I'm setting them to go towards their cap. I want to move my utility as close as I can. Now we see the Shikaku is taking out the Scharnhorst. Now what I want to do here is I want to turn this Ganez broadside to the Decosta. So what I'm going to do is just run down his side here. And as he's always started to turn, I'm just looking to fire the torpedoes either side of him to keep him going in a straight line. And that will have the advantage, of course, of giving the DeCosta the full broadside of that Ganesh to hit. And in the meantime, while he's doing that, I manoeuvre the planes around to get one more run on him off the other side. He's aware those torpedoes have gone past him now. So now the Ganesh is starting to turn in towards the Duke of DeCosta. The Turpitz is having probably a massive epic secondary battle over there with the Massachusetts. But we can't get up too close because there's a lot of AA fire from the Massachusetts. We just keep moving the CV forwards with Urban Slayer. Get up towards the objective and try and get that secured. We are now in a position of 5 for 4. So now the game has switched around in our favour because of the intense defensive work we did down at the base together. Now I've decided to go again with my... Um, dive bombers because of the fire chance. There's a good chance that DeCosta now with his angle is probably firing, hopefully firing Heishi at the Ganea. So I want to get up there. The bombs are a good way to do a large amount of damage, but they're also a very good way to keep that um, that legendary British dot damage, the same as you get off the um, battleship line with that high chance of causing fire. But it's high risk, high reward strategy with these. They're difficult to hit because they don't dive in, they don't go up and down in the same way, they carpet bomb from the same altitude. So it's more difficult to actually make the targets hit, but when they do hit, you do get the fire and you do get good damage as well. Now at this point, we've just seen the tick over there, we are now leading this game. And I still haven't dropped these fighters off yet, because I want to know where they're going to be of use. Now we've lost 
the turpits. And when I say sorry, when I say of being of use, is I want them to be of use later on in this game because the consumables have been going, keeping a rough count. The current CVs they've used about six each, so they haven't got many defensive squadrons left. And our best chance here is moving up as close as we can to here to take this base and uh, looking after keeping Urban Slayer alive. Because the Duke of the Osters, he's not really going to last too much longer against that Ganez. And that is going to give them the points advantage back. So we do need to get rid of him. So we're going to have a little run down him again. Nice high. We're going to get a good drop on him this time, I believe. We do get the fire. You'll see another defensive AA defence fighter. Consumable has been used by the CV and dropped straight over the top of the Gnez, the Shikaku, because he was defending against my bombs. So that's another consumable they've now lost. So we know that that squadron is going to be hanging around there. The Riojo's fighters are going through. I don't think they're going to make it. And the Gnez is still hanging around over there. Although I do believe he's going to go down shortly, I'm still going to fly over towards him anyway and see if we can put some more torpedoes in him. Now he's starting to move away from Urban Slayer. I've dropped one little fighters over Urban Slayer now so we can move him towards the cap and uh, he's, th those are now going to take care of those fighters that got into the bubble while we try and torpedo this Guinness because we need to get the points back in our favour it is three ships for free and they do have two CVs each and we have one DD to their one battleship but not for much longer we do manage to get good torpedoes into the Guinness Unfortunately, we don't get a flood. We turn straight back around. We're going to have another go at that. Um, our Ryojo is still getting involved here as well. So he's dropping. So he is putting damage down on this Gnez because he's completely isolated now. Both CVs are running a little bit low on their consumables. So we get another two torpedoes in. And then the gunfire comes in from Urban Slayer. Uh, coordinating between us. I wanted this kill. He wanted this kill for his Kraken. So I wanted it more to stop him from getting his Kraken. <laughs> Unfortunately, he does, but well done, Urban Slayer. There we go. He's secured his Kraken for this game. And um, we've managed to turn this game in our favour. Although it's not over yet. We've still got three minutes to go. Now, their two CVs are going to be going for Urban Slayer. Because if they get him, that is going to get the points advantage back in their favour. Because they got into our cap earlier and stopped the point scoring potential. Unless we get into their cap and do the same thing, they could still win this game. So there's going to be a fair bit of work going on. We will notice there another defensive fighter has been dropped just off my right hand side. So their CVs are running pretty low. Now I'm still got these same torpedo bombers up. Probably I should have gone back and swapped these out, sent these back. But I thought I'd have a little look for the CVs as well. Maybe we could get one, maybe we could get two in. So this is a misplay. This shouldn't have happened. We could have used the hill as well to potentially get these on the target. That didn't happen. So now what I want to do is take off with my dive bombers because I want to try and trigger the repairs on both of the CVs. So the idea is if we can get away with it, I'm going to drop one and then turn on to the other one. If we can get a fire off of them, that'd be great because it uses their damage, their damage con starts running. Then we can turn around and we can, because we've managed to close the distance quickly, we can try and get back on them and get back on them with our torpedoes. Maybe we can get a flood to go with it. So we'll see how this one pans out. So Urban Slayer's coming into the cap. Uh, he's going to provide the AA cover to me now because he's still got AA consumables available. We'll notice another fighter consumable has gone off on the Furious and find my reckoning and count from this game, that's probably his last. He's used everything from all of his division now. So we're going to have a little bit of a jink, just playing with the throttle here and the boost, you know, the speed brakes and then the boost, just to get between the flak. And we've managed to make our way through good news is we've got a nice big hit there, we've got 8k on him and we've managed to start a fire. So with the fire on him and straight out immediately, there's no point going straight back in him again because his damage gun is still running, our chances of getting the fire immediately aren't as high, so I'm going to take the run and pay with aircraft at the Shikaku. And all the time what this is doing, this is forcing them to concentrate on defending their ships and we're running the clock down now, we're down to 58 seconds. We're nearly in line here, just working our way through the flak. Break off, we're going to fly above, drop our carpet bomb. That's a lovely grouping, and that's nearly 11,000 damage, and we do get another fire. They're going to turn around now. We're not going to get the last one off anyway, so I'm just trying to get him clear with the AA. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. I wanted to get him clear and bring him back. 
And then we're going to go again. We're going to take off with our torpedo bombers. Although this is going to take us towards the end of the game, obviously, because we've 27 seconds on the time clock. We're not going to really get in there and actually finish these off. So our early verdict of the implacable so far is she's fun to play. She is enjoyable. She's a good ship. She's got the same chances of doing the same things as the other CVs. They're just different styles, obviously, like we saw in the other videos with the other British CVs. But the uh, carpet bombers are different. The rocket bombers are basically the same. And the torpedoes, if you take the armaments are moving close, then you've got a good chance of doing some good damage. So we'll have a look at the battle screen, and then we're going to go and have a look back. So we had 93,000 damage, which isn't bad. 15k on our base. We shot down a good amount of aircraft. We torpedoed 15. And we got 29 bomb drops. Our team score had them placed us placed both at the top. So um, that we were quite pleased with that. So it was a good team effort to bring this one home from what was a losing position earlier on. And the detail report to see the damage. 34,000, 50,000 in torpedoes. And not as much in rockets, because we didn't use them as much. Then after we see what we did in XP, which is quite handy for command, about 30k, we'll, we'll pop back to port and we will have a look at the build of the Implacable. So let's start with what modules we have on board Implacable. Um, there's only played a few games, so there's probably still room for some tweaking around here, but we have gone with Air Group's Modification 1. It just seems to make the most tense. Auxiliary armor isn't much use. Uh, then we've gone for aircraft engines modification one because we want to increase the engine boost to the aircraft. I have at the moment gone for attack aircraft, extend the time of the attack because you get a little bit more time when you're diving to manoeuvre your aircraft a little bit more. Uh, even though the reticle does get larger if you move it around too much, it does give you just a little bit more leeway to change course when you are trying to predict where normally a DD's gone and you want to make that drop. So that's pretty helpful. The torpedo run, I'm not really sure extending the attack runs required on there. You've got quite a long preparation time anyway. So I would personally uh, stick with this one. But it is, of course, my personal opinion. And it doesn't have to be all you're going to go with. And then I've gone with increasing the attack pull at the HP of my... Uh, attack aircraft. This probably isn't the correct one to do looking at that game because normally when you're attacking needies you're not under as heavy AA. I would imagine and I probably will I'm going to do it right now is I'm more time on either torpedoes or dive bombers so I think probably for the next game I go out I'm going to change that and increase the HP of my dive bombers because they're the ones that start the fires and um, they're the ones that tend to be hanging around in the area a bit more when you're coming in from the side with the torpedoes I want to be in and out on boost as quick as possible and then for the final one I've gone for flight control modification one so it reduces my re restoration time for the aircraft and puts two more on deck now this does sit in the slot with concealment systems so that's one to be aware of and the reason I say that is because my current concealment on the CV is 14.5 so you need to be a little bit careful about how you go about doing this uh, that will play more into when we look at the captain skills next because on my captain skills I have not taken the concealment expert either um, this is still an early build it's probably gonna change but at the moment it doesn't feel too uncomfortable as long as you're paying attention to what your CV hulls doing and uh, for the games I've played so far I need to be a little bit more aware than I have been um, this could work so I've gone with, on my Tier 1 skills, Air Supremacy, I want to service the planes as quick as possible. And uh, I've also gone with Improved Engine Boost. Uh, torpedo Acceleration, and then Improved Engines, to increase the speed of my squadrons. Uh, survivability Expert, and those extra HP are all good, and as we move up the tiers they get better for um, each tier of aircraft. And then we've got Aircraft Armour to increase their survivability further. Demolition Expert, because it's British and uh, lots of fire chance. And that site stabilisation again, so that gives me a little bit more time for that preparation and moving around, just to keep the, the site from moving around quite as much. Now the reason I'm pointing out that demolition expert on here is because it is British and along the British lines my attack aircraft have got a 7% chance of causing HE, but the big one is here. Here's the dive bombers, it's 34% chance of causing HE damage. So if I was going up the line I think my first choice would probably be here. Uh, that would be my first point. That would be my second point. Uh, your third point its going to be a mix around here. I would probably go with Survivability Expert. 
and then maybe build backwards. This one isn't the most important. This might want to be the last thing I'll probably go for as well. So that might be for my when I'm going from 15 to 19 points and the last skill I get and then build out further this way by going with um, probably HE next or aircraft armor and then going for improved engines, improved boost and site stabilization afterwards. So that has been uh, HMS Implacable. Um, she's quite fun to play. Uh, still a lot more to do, still a lot more to learn and get a lot better at. She's different from what she was on um, test before. So uh, go out there and enjoy her and see what you can do. And um, leave any feedback or any concerns or criticisms or any ideas. Because um, as this progresses, I'll probably do another video in another week or so to see if our gameplay's improved and moved on further. But until such time, I've been Bravado, and um, please like and subscribe and comment below. Uh, show anyone else you might want to show, and just let me know what you think generally. But um, that is the HMS Implacable. Until we sync again, Bravado out. <laughs>